This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone. Welcome to the studio space. We're just gonna film this real off the cuff style, super casual. I just wanted to give you a look at the space before I move and just sort of document it for myself. And you might be thinking it is a little dark in here. So unfortunately we're gonna have to turn on the overhead lights, which makes it look a little bit ugly, but at least you'll be able to see everything. This is where I store all of my weird stuff and it's where I film all the painting videos, do my airbrushing, I edit the videos over there. Over here is where I film the dialogue. You're used to seeing this view right here. I zoom out a bit, there we go. And this big table in the middle, I mostly use for large projects, but it was originally intended to be a gaming space. I think the full table is like four by six. It's two Ikea tanner tops put together. So now that we've got the overview of the room, I think I'm just gonna go into super granular detail and show you everything. Once again, sorry, it's a little bit messy. We're in the middle of a move but I wanted to show off this space because I think I'll regret it if I don't document it. And maybe there'll be some stuff in here that you can use for your own hobby spaces. Okay, so starting at the door, uh, this is the trash heap. This is where everything goes that I don't know where it's gonna go yet. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, just ignore this space. Uh, so the, the first thing you, you see when you come in here is this big display cabinet had this thing for a while. I originally bought it for my video game collection, but it's slowly become completely taken over with miniatures. I really, the meaning to put LEDs inside of it, and I hope to put LEDs in here and make it my miniature display cabinet for the new house. I think I'm just gonna go through everything that's here. If you get bored, you skip ahead to the other sections. So starting on the top, we've got all of the big box GW games that I've collected over the years and some Star Wars stuff on the end. So we've got some War Cry, we've got some Indominus Dominion 3rd Edition 40K, got some Kill Team boxes, Silver Tower, I really wanna paint that one day. So I would say out of all of this stuff, maybe like 30% is actually painted, 20%. Got War Cry up here. I really like collecting the Warcry boxes, but I think they've just started to get out of my price range with how often they get released. We've got the collectible chaos box up there, which I've started painting recently. We've got Loon Curse, which was one of the first big boxes I bought uh, after the starter set. We've got Warhammer 6th edition, another copy of 3rd edition 40K, the Sisters of Battle box, Cursed City, We've got some more AOS boxes, which I need to paint. A mint in box copy of Gorka Morka, which I hope to one day make a video about, as well as the Star Wars games, my Legion and Imperial Assault boxes. There's also a few more boxes over here. I've kind of got the paint set on display. And over here, we've got some miscellaneous extra boxes of things. There's a box of goblins up there I keep meaning to do something with. Okay, so inside the cabinets, I feel like about half of it is video games and about half of it is miniatures. So I'll go through the video games more quickly because this is a miniatures channel. So in the first cabinet, these are, I don't know if I mentioned already, these are Besta cabinets from Ikea. I'll have all the links down in the description to the various pieces of furniture if you want any of these for yourself. So yeah, this is just my very small video game collection. Got some NES games, got Hollow Knight stuff, some DS games, N64, a few Switch games, my DS, my GameCube collection, my like two or three games for the Wii, I would really like to one day make a diorama for a lot of these Nintendo toys that I have. Got some Switch games. I promise this video won't be all about video games, but I figure there'll be some people who are gonna ask what's in here, so I might as well cover my bases. Here's all my little Kirbys. And we've also got some more Switch games. My Zeldas, Links, whatever you wanna call them. 
and more Switch games and some NES games. Okay, so the second cabinet is where we start getting into the miniatures, or sort of. These are all my Pokemon skill world figures. I would really like to make a diorama for these one day. I've been collecting those for a while, and some video games behind those as well. You can see that this used to be more of a video game storage thing, and now it's being taken over by toys and miniatures. Over here, we've got the Rainbow Army from those paint test videos I did. This is all the different colors of the original speed paints and all the contrast paints, as well as my Wii U collection <laughs> along the back. Well, it's appropriate somehow. Below this, we've got my Cruel Boys Army, which I speed painted, as well as a few other little fantasy figures from various projects. And at the bottom, we've got the Hoth Army. It really deserves its own display case, but right now it's sort of packed in with a bunch of overflow video game stuff. And then over to the side, this cabinet is the is just all of the rest of the miniatures. So we have my Rivenstone stuff up there. We have some of my older miniatures from Lord of the Rings and what's that called? War Machine. It's been so long since I've cared about War Machine that I forgot what it was called. On the second shelf, we of course have the Ice Planet crew as well as a lot of my Warcry warbands. And below that, we have all of my miscellaneous Age of Sigmar figures. And I'll be putting links to the videos for all of these various miniatures that I've painted down in the description. So if you wanna see how I painted any of these, there's a video for almost all of them, I think. Below this, we have the 40K cabinet. First shelf is all Xenos. So we've got a few orcs that I have, as well as the Necron half of Indomitus. Below that, we've got my Space Sharks. And then below that, we've got my Krieg, as well as my Sisters of Battle. And on the bottom shelf, there's a few more 40K adjacent figures and um, the rest of my Star Wars Legion which I painted a very long time ago, around when the game came out. I don't have any glass cases on the bottom row because it's mostly books. But there is some miniature related stuff down here, so I think we'll take a closer look. So this first shelf is mostly storage. This is where I keep my Tony Tony Chopper from One Piece, Bowser Amiibo, and of course, my Bloodborne disc, which I don't know where the case went for that. It's probably around here somewhere. Below this, there's a bunch of miscellaneous art books, comics. And then as we get closer to here, we have the Warhammer books, of course, the Warhammer books. So most of the codexes I own, battle tomes, I guess, are from Age of Sigmar. I was really into Age of Sigmar for a while. Not as much anymore. I still like the miniatures, but I'm not really as happy with the way the lore has been going. But you know what's not like that? This video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and hosting platform that I've been using for over a decade now for all of my website needs. You just pick from one of their wonderful professionally designed templates, add in any extra pages or modules that you might want, and customize things to your heart's content using their extremely modular and intuitive design system. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my current Squarespace website for the past year to document all of my hobby progress, reference documents, and anything else I can't fit into these videos. So if you'd like to make a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. And now back to the room tour. And beside that, we've got the Warcry books, and then we slowly get into the other games, workshop games. We've got 40K, we've got some Lord of the Rings, we've got Vincent Adams' Reign in Hell, which I still would like to play. I've almost got a warband together for that. We've got the retro rule books, and then over here in these marble things, what are these called? Magazine files? I've got my white dwarf collection. 
I'm sorry about the bad lighting. I need to get better lighting in my new place. So I have each of these organized by year. And then I also, sometimes I will put the codexes from that year in here as well, if I have codexes from that year. And that's how I organize my White Dwarf collections. I think I have every magazine from 1998 to 2001, which is really my most nostalgic period for Games Workshop stuff. Let's move behind the cart here. Uh, we have, there's also some modern White Dwarf in here, which I subscribed to for a little while. And then above all this, we have more books. Um, some Warhammer fiction, but also uh, a few rule books from some indie games. So we've got like Frostgrave, we've got Stargrave. Some of these were sent to me by Osprey Publishing, and some of these I bought myself. We've got Relic Blade from Sean Sutter, which I've really been meaning to play. He sent me this a while ago. Sure, I'm sorry, Sean, I haven't had time to play that yet, hopefully at the new house. And we have my Kill Team books down here as well. And some Lord of the Rings and even some Chainmail rule books, which I really hope to cover in the future. So um, in front of all this here, this is my rolling cart. I have a whole video where I talk about this, I think. And I used to use this a lot in the old studio to have all my paints on, but it's really become more of a paint inbox at this place. I just kind of throw things here where I don't, that I don't know where they go yet. So yeah, it's kind of paint overflow. This is kind of cool. I have a light clipped on here and I can use it as kind of an accent light wherever I need one for filming. So continuing across the room, we have some Lego storage here because I don't have uh, any other place to put these right now. Hopefully at the new house, I'll have another, I'll have a little corner for my Lego. And then we get into the painting desk. So there's a lot of stuff to go through here. Uh, let's start with, there's my Grot Bag Scuttlers Captain. So this is kind of the collection of <laughs> different miniatures from various videos that I've done. You might recognize some of the stuff here. Lots of miscellaneous figures sent to me by different companies. This is mostly from sponsored videos. So they just hang out there and I get to look at them. Below this, we have the bits storage. So this is all the different, kind of like my bits box. It's not as organized as it should be. You can see a lot of these things are missing. Got my flashlight. More bits boxes. And this is just kind of the trash heap. This is where I put things again where I don't really know where they go yet. Okay, so let's let's go to the painting desk. So the painting desk is kind of the most interesting part probably for most of you. So this is where all the videos get filmed. So typically there's two lights. There's one on each side for filming the miniatures. And I usually have the camera on this little thing here when I am filming with it. This whole assembly, uh, I think the recommendation to buy this was from one of Miniac's early videos where he talks about how he films stuff. And yeah, I bought the exact same one and it's worked really well. Um, the only thing that I do differently is I have a little extra light on here so that I don't have to have two desk lamps. And that is where I film most of my painting footage. Sometimes if it's a larger project, I will film it over here so like sometimes you get that shot where I'm like here or something, but on a daily basis, this is where I do most of my painting, whether I'm filming it or just painting for fun. So on the desktop, I have all the paints that I use on a regular basis. You can see I was just reviewing the broken anvil paints. So I have those right here because I've been working with those and I've been painting the Marvel Crisis Protocol. Really excited to play this game. Not all the miniatures are finished, but I'm excited to play it. In the corner there, we have my contrast paints, which it's always good to have those nearby. Got a complete set, I think. And special thank you to DT Sniper and his gaming group for buying me all of the contrast 2.0 paints so that I could review them in that video from a while ago. Uh, over here, 
I've got a few nostalgia paints from War Colors. Thank you for sending those to me. Sorry, I still haven't had a time to do a review of those. Maybe I will do one in the future. And we've got some metal color, some contrast paints that don't fit on that rack. And we've also got all the speed paints over here, all 90 of them. Uh, and of course, the Viejo Express color. I've been sort of wondering whether I should do a video review of Express Color because like, I feel like it's been pretty well covered by other YouTubers, but let me know if you want me to do a review of these. I do really like them. The video would be like, they're good, I like them. So maybe I'll, I'll do a comparison video of all of the different uh, transparent paints at one point, but yeah, let me know if you wanna see that from me or if you agree with me that it's been pretty well covered. Up here, we've got my paint chart that I just made for the past video. And of course, all of my golden so flat paints with some miniatures resting on top because I haven't used these in a while. Above that, I've got a bunch of little containers which contain all of my various little bits and things for basing. Some green stuff, basing materials. This is a bag of the remaining Giga Robo figures I haven't painted. I put those up there as a reminder to paint them and I still haven't painted them, but hopefully I'll do that in the future. We've also got some Night Haunt up here that need to be painted for a patron who I still owe some of these to. Again, I hope to do that in the future when I have some time. We've got some basing materials, DOS clay, some basing rollers, a heat thing, some other stuff. We've got some paint blitzer, which was sent to me by the guy who made it, or the person who made it, I don't remember. And uh, I like it. It wasn't enough to make a whole video on, but I do enjoy this product. I endorse it. A plus would recommend. Uh, more basing stuff. And this is the shelf of unfinished miniatures that I need to finish one day. Up here, we've got some leaves and stuff from Diorama Persepe, which I plan to use for a future project. And then this is all of my, this is my collection of various like styrene. Uh, there's some cork back there. There's some corrugated cardboard, just like all of the different flat things that I use for basing. So beside my painting desk, we've got the airbrush setup. And if you want a more in-depth look at how I use this setup, uh, you can check out my airbrushing basics video, which I'll have linked in the description. So I have the compressor down here and it feeds up to the airbrush. And this is my airbrush booth. There's a hose in the back, which goes all the way down here under the table. And then there's a hose, which I can Put out the window. So this is the airbrush booth and then beside it I've got another pegboard with some various things on it. Uh, not very organized but this is all the stuff I use to airbrush and this over here is the overflow desk. That's kind of what I call this. So this is where I usually have one or more projects set up here. Right now I've got some terrain set up here. I think I was in the progress of painting some of this stuff. But what's on this table really varies depending on what I'm working on. So this is kind of the filming corner. So when I am filming dialogue, I do it in this corner. So I usually put the camera up on this tripod and then you get the view that you're used to in the, cam <laughs> in the videos. And beside it, I've got a second little tripod, which is for my iPad. And then I'll put, I put my scripts on there and read them to you. Uh, and we got a printer in the corner, some other stuff, some models from the previous videos, a vaporwave head that I've been meaning to paint for a project. Beside all this, we've got the editing station. So you can see like, I kind of intent, I kind of intended it to be like a workflow where like you would start over here, get inspired by all the books and stuff move to here, and like this usually, this used to be the assembly station. So you'd go from inspiration to assembly to priming, and then this used to be the painting desk. 
And then after you're done painting, you film the dialogue and you edit the video. And that used to be kind of my workflow, but I swapped the assembly for the painting desk just because this was a nicer place to paint. But in theory, I really like that idea of a workflow that goes around the room. Sorry if I made you dizzy. So yeah, this is the computer that I use to edit. It's just a, a MacBook laptop of some sort. And back here, I've got all my sheets of styrene for building things, but also because I use these to bounce light off of these two walls when I'm filming my face. I just tape them up to the wall wherever I need them, and use them for lighting. And that's pretty much it. A bunch of stuff in boxes, either because we're moving or because I just haven't unpacked it since we moved here. Oh, and let's talk about one more feature of this room. Well, there's a closet. We're not going in there, but there's a closet. There's the door. But also we have a basement in this room. Well, sort of. I'll show you the basement. So we have this space under the table. When I was building this giant table, I thought, you know, I should probably use the space underneath for something. So the space underneath is like for storage and you gotta have your Crocs as well. Very stylish. And I think that's about it. I think that's it. That's the room. That's pretty much everything. Make sure to let me know if there's anything I missed or if you want more detail on how something's built or what specific table I'm using or what camera I'm using. I'm happy to put all that stuff in the comments or in the description. And yeah, let me know what you think of this more casual style video. Uh, just wanted to document this room before I leave here for good and move into a much bigger studio space. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.